Hi there, Andrew here again with a new video on how to create your own UI component library. Uh, so we're going to end up with something like this. This is the storybook here. We're going to start by opening a terminal window and entering the mpx create react app command. You can check the comments for the command so you can just paste it in. Once that's complete, we need to CD into the directory where we've installed it. And we're going to run the mpx storybook init command, which is going to start setting up storybook in our project. Now we're going to start by typing npm run storybook, which will get it up and running so we can check it out. Okay, open up your project in VS Code and you should see a structure like this. We're going to start off by first creating a components folder. In the stories folder, we have a button CSS, a button stories.tsx, and a button.tsx file. Let's move that into the components. As we don't need anything else from the stories folder, let's delete that. We should be able to see now that we only have a button in the storybook. I'm a big fan of CSS modules, so we're going to rename this file to button.module.css. And we'll also have to rename the import there for the CSS. CSS modules are already namespaced, so we can remove the storybook in front of the name of these classes here. So I'm just going to select all the storybook in the CSS file, and I'm just going to remove it. So you can see there in the guide uh, where I've taken a screenshot of before and after with that CSS file. Let's select all these parts from the guide and we'll replace them in the button.tsx file. Now I want to use my new style uh, CSS classes, but I have to do them in a slightly different way in the class names here. So what I'm doing is I am using the literals, string literals, to put the variable names of the classes in. And then I'm using the mode, which is selected from the primary or not primary. And I've also got a join there. So what that's going to do is to nicely take my CSS classes from the array there and display that properly in the JSX. With CSS modules, I need the classes to be camel case, not kebab case. So I'm just going to fix that up now. So camel case is where the second word has a capital letter for its class name. Okay, how does that look? Okay, that's great. Now continuing on with our component library, I'm going to make a heading component. Like all React components, we need to first import React into it. 
And because we're using TypeScript, I'm going to create an interface for this component. Let's start off with a type of heading that it is. So that's H1, H2, and so on. Next, I'll create a label. So this will be what the actual content of the heading is. And now I need to declare the actual component name and make sure, of course, I've got the export. Let's define our props now for our heading component. And we'll put some defaults in. And add a spread there for our default props. Now with my headings, I like to add an ID so that we can link to the headings at a later point in the same document. So let's add a variable called anchor ID and we are going to take it from the label. Now the problem with IDs of course is that we need to take away certain characters and those are things like spaces. Let's replace that with a hyphen. And another thing to remove would be commas. And of course, let's remove any white space. And now let's add that to our heading element. And now we need to duplicate the headings for all the different element types. So that's from H1 to H6. Next up, we can add a CSS module for it. So let's add heading.module.css. Let's create a base heading style called heading. We can add some margin to the bottom. I like to use rims. Let's add a line height. And of course, some um, font weight, because it's a heading. Let's make it bold. We're going to have a heading class for each type of heading element. So for H1 to H6, we'll have one specific. Uh, and I like to start off with like a grade of about uh, font size 2 being the largest, and work my way down.
And finally, the year of my hitting six. Now let's add the CSS module to the heading component. And the same as the button classes. We're going to do the same sort of setup here where we add the heading and the base heading to each H element. Now I've just noticed I've missed probably the most important part, the actual heading itself. So let's add the label here. I'm going to proceed to add these to all the other heading elements. And rename, of course, to the appropriate class. Now, seeing as I have to add the label to all these heading elements, I'm going to use Option Click or Alt Click on Windows. And that will let me select in the same place and paste. And now we need a stories file for the heading component itself. From the storybook library, we need to add the component story and the component meta functions. Let's create our default. So this is the title here, and that's what's going to show in the left-hand side menu in Storybook. The forward slash with the components there means it's going to sit under a folder. And of course, we're going to have to reference our component name, which I haven't imported. So let's do that now. We now need to add the template. It uses the component story. Okay, now we need to add the template bind there, and we need to add some default properties for our template. Now, it looks like I've got a problem with my heading here in the template. Okay, so it's saying it's not a valid JSX element. Okay. So the problem is my heading. Okay, so because I didn't have a default return, I didn't have a valid component. Of course, 
I need round brackets, not curly braces. Okay, let's take a look at this component in Storybook. So this is just the start of building out a component library. Uh, you can keep adding components to it and you can check out the repo I've got on my website. So andrewford.co.nz and look for the component UI library article. Catch you next time.